Welcome back. You're still tuned into Halftime Report. Let's talk about the renewable energy space. India has added 31.25 gigawatt of renewable energy uh, capacity between April to November period and is on track to add another 40 to 45 gigawatt this year itself. Uh, to talk about the sector, what the outlook is, what are the challenges we have with us, Somesh Kumar, who's the partner and at Power and Utilities Leader at EVA India and Girish Kumar Kadam, who is the SVP and Group Head Corporate Sector Ratings at ICRA. Gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, Somesh, let me start with you. Uh, uh, we are on track to end this year with a capacity addition of 40 to 45 gigawatt this year itself. Uh, do you think this trend will only improve uh, come 2026? And what are some of the biggest constraints that we are seeing right now? Is it land? Is it grid access? Uh, has financing continued the way we were seeing earlier as well? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Um, yeah, I mean, the country has done very well. I, I, I would say that, you know, we've added 40, 45 gigawatts is what we're looking at towards the end of the year. Uh, uh, you know, we we have a target of about 500 gigawatts uh, to achieve by 2030, uh, which is in about, uh, you know, and we're about half of it as of now. Uh, so in the next uh, five years, we have to add about 250 gigawatts, which is roughly about 50 gigawatts each year. Uh, you know, looking at the current trends, uh, we are very optimistic that this will happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, as you said, in terms of some of the constraints, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, the, the usual constraints used to be uh, land, financing, uh, and also grid access. But off late, uh, you know, what we've been seeing is that, uh, you know, capital availability for renewable projects has improved substantially. Uh, and domestic as well as international investors remain very active. Uh, even in terms of land acquisition, which used to pose challenges, uh, is not so much of a challenge. Yes, you know, uh, it's not absolutely, uh, you know, there. But, uh, you know, things like solar parks, uh, hybrid projects, wasteland aggregation have provided workable solutions. And, uh, you know, we're seeing more and more support of government in acquiring land for this. But the real bigger, uh, pop, uh, you know, uh, uh, bottlenecks, I think there are two bottlenecks, which I would say. One uh, is the grid evacuation, grid access, the transmission readiness. Uh, so the generation capacity is often, you know, awarded faster and constructed faster than the grid comes up. Uh, so that really, uh, you know, uh, creates an issue for evacuation of power and grid integration of renewables. And there are several issues in that, in that, you know, whether it is right of way or coordination across states, uh, planning mismatches. So I think those are the things which need to be overcome. And the second one is around the intermittency. So, uh, you know, as we see more and more renewables, which are intermittent source of power, I think we have to make sure that there are flexible resources coming up at the same pace, including storage capacity. So I think those are the two things I think we have to focus on. Okay. All right, that point is taken. Uh, let's get in, Mr. Kadam, into this conversation as well. Uh, Mr. Kadam, you know, like um, uh, you know, like Sumesh pointed out, uh, issues such as land acquisition, etc., are sort of easing out when it comes to re the renewable capacity in India. But but the intermittency problem is something that he did point out. Uh, just give us a sense in terms of how much of an issue it is and a roadblock it is for India to get to its targets on renewable capacity, Mr. Kadam. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me here for, as part of this show. So certainly uh, the intermittency uh, uh, is something which is inherent when it comes to renewable uh, generation. Now, uh, you know, and that is leading to, you know, the challenges related to the curtailment of, you know, renewable power, uh, which is happening in pockets in states like Rajasthan particularly, and also to some extent in Gujarat, which are, you know, the weight, which are highly RRA zones and uh, of late, we have seen a considerable RE capacity addition in these pockets. So, and this, this particular challenge has uh, precisely happened because of, you know, the, the mismatch between the, the installed capacity, uh, the commission capacity, vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the available capacity for the evacuation. And that is resulting a challenge, uh, particularly for some, uh, you know, portion of, you know, the installed capacity in, in states like Rajasthan. Uh, where the capacity has uh, is sort of uh, getting stranded because of you know the temporary you know GNA access, so that is a challenge uh, which is currently being witnessed, and that is also because of you know the the, the necessary transmission lines are uh, still not commissioned. So that's one. The second is uh, of course uh, there can be a, a challenge which is also being witnessed as we understand is 
for the projects which are connected to the state uh, network and uh, uh, essentially on the pretext of the grid safety requirements. So the curtailment episodes are largely happening because of these two uh, you know, uh, issues. The underlying theme here is the adequacy of the transmission network. So as in when we, as in at the, given the fact that we have seen a very rapid rise in renewable share, and in fact, it is going to be like that even the going forward, the corresponding strengthening in the transmission network, both at interstate as well as intrastate level is, is a key. And that's where uh, there has been some slow progress and some fast track approach is really required. Uh, on top of that, uh, what is also required is the, the storage uh, you know, capacity built up, uh, both in battery and the pump. In fact, the, the, the kind of decline, the price decline that we have seen in the battery price, uh, battery price levels is something which is highly encouraging for the sector. And we have already started seeing a very good you know, participation from number of players in the standalone you know, battery uh, storage baits. Uh, at a pretty uh, competitive, you know, tariffs, and obviously, you know, these are uh, being a short gestation projects, so that should also pick up. So the the the, the strengthening in the battery storage, uh, you know, projects uh, along with the PSP, which should take some more time because that is a long gestation, you know, project cycle. While uh, that is a clearly a focus area as we see for number of you know developers as we discuss. But certainly, you know, the, the, the progress towards storage would also be very, very critical, you know, to manage, you know, the challenges which are coming out, you know, from the intermittency. Uh, this is, and just to give another data point, you know, you know, if, if you look at the overall renewable energy generation mix in FY25 is about mm -hmm. 20%. It is going to rise to about 35 to 40% over the next four to five years. Sure. So we have about a considerable rise. So with, within that context, you know, these strengthenings are certainly required. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Mesh, you know, I just want to come back to you. If renewable returns, you know, are structurally lower than fossil fuel, why is the capital still pouring in at record levels? Uh, what is it that we could infer from this? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, traditionally, I think fossil fuels have been uh, the mainstay of India, uh, at least in the, in, the, in the distant past. But now, over the last few years, we're seeing that fossil uh, the the uh, you know the renewables have taken over, and the capital is really chasing the renewable projects only. You know we are hardly seeing any interest towards funding of uh, uh, fossil fuel based projects. Uh, you know, in many cases, we've seen that uh, or typically renewable energy projects sometimes do offer uh, lower no nominal returns than fossil fuel investments. Uh, but, you know, the capital is chasing them because they provide uh, more stable, uh, predictable and long duration cash flows, as I would say, uh, you know, for large institutional investors such as pension funds and sovereign wealth funds. I think this uh, uh, stability is highly attractive. Um, and, you know, renewable projects with uh, long term power purchase agreements uh, resemble infrastructure assets more than uh, what would uh, be said as commodity based energy projects so revenue certainty and reduces the downside risk which in, which is increasingly valued uh, you know in a volatile global environment so at the global pool of long term capital expands uh, i think the demand for predictable assets has increased faster and will increase faster than demand for high risk high return opportunities uh, and you know Clearly, investors are uh, both accepting lower returns and actively reassessing fossil fuel risk because the latter is becoming more and more decisive. Uh, I think fossil fuel investments face increasing regulatory uncertainties, carbon pricing risks, financing constraints, and the possibility of being stranded at some point in time. So I think because of all these reasons, you know, even if the returns are slightly lower in some cases, I think the investors are still uh, you know, very encouraged uh, to go for uh, the renewable energy sector and investments take, are coming into that. Take the point, take that point, but that is that continues to be the big point of debate, right? Why should one invest in renewables versus fossil fuels? But of course, so far, money has poured and we'll have to see whether that continues or not without policy support. Uh, Sumesh and Girish Kumar, a lot more questions, but we are completely out of time. But thank you so much for joining in with your insights on the renewable space and what the outlook is going forward for a country like India, which has a huge dependence on fossil fuel as a source of energy. Uh, time for a break now. Up next, we'll get in Mangnam Malu, who will get you all the uh, trends coming in from the FNO market. Stay tuned for that.